Awesome, so in this video, I want to introduce you to something really cool and something that really helped me at the start of my Amazon journey separate myself from the competition that is out there and really corner off a piece of the market, a piece of the $500 million that's happening of sales every single day on Amazon and just protect myself from new competitors and new people who are storming that market. So we're gonna use the Amazon Innovation Spectrum to explain this to you. And we're gonna go along that spectrum and talk about four very different examples from someone with a very low budget to start to someone with a considerably high budget and how you can use these examples to draw inspiration and pull them back into your own product. So before we jump into these four very specific and helpful examples for you, we have two things to take care of. The first one, please hit that like button below this video. Make that turn blue if you get any value whatsoever from these videos. I super appreciate that. The second thing we need to do is we need to pick up and we need to put on what I call our zoom out goggles together because the biggest mistake I see people making out here on Amazon and even in this YouTube space of teaching Amazon is people are way too close to that canvas. People are way too close up to what they think the process is and what they think they need to do for Amazon FBA. But when you take a step back and you throw your zoom out glasses on, things become a lot more clearer. You get a much wider perspective and you understand that Amazon, the products on Amazon, the niches on Amazon, all have to adhere to these fundamental and quite historic business principles. And when we do that, we can predict the Amazon market far better than our competition. And we can do that reliably so we can anticipate where it's going and get that leg up on the competition in the market space. So throw these goggles on and let's jump in. So categories or niches are always emerging and they're always diverging. And this is a principle that you have to fundamentally understand before you choose your product on Amazon. And online shopping or e-commerce is a divergence from a bigger category of commerce. You know, you used to be able to get a newspaper and you could clip out the coupon and you'd mail that in with a check and they'd send you back your product. That was what um, online commerce, the closest thing to it was. And then that diverged into TV sales where they had infomercials on and you call up and you don't need to uh, use snail mail to mail in a check, but in fact that you get, could give credit card details over the phone and they'd send you the product. And then of course you've got another divergence in um, e-commerce or online shopping. You know, since it was invented in 1993, Amazon jumped on and was one of the first movers in this world in 1994, and therefore they dominate it. You know, they do 50% of all e-commerce sales in the US. One in every two sales in the US is done through Amazon. But you have to understand that even e-commerce is diverging. You know, people are now buying through apps. People are now, uh, there's e-commerce going through games where you buy power-ups in games. And you have to understand from a uh, business perspective, these categories are always emerging and they're always diverging. And when we zoom back in on Amazon, we have to understand that niches are always emerging and they're always diverging. So from someone who got started in computers, say IBM, way back in the 80s, you know, they owned that hardware for computers. And then what came along was software. And IBM needed software so that uh, general population could start using their computers. And you know, this niche diverged not just from hardware, but now it's hardware and software. And the cool thing is that most of the time, the gorilla in that first category, in that first niche, does not have the capability or the flexibility to own that new divergence. So IBM owned that hardware and then Microsoft came along and was the one who owned and was one of the first movers in the diverging category of software. And then the internet comes along and you'd be like, okay, Microsoft owns software, they've got the most money, they've got a massive team, you'd think they could jump on and own sort of the internet search, but they tried and they don't. Actually, Google came along with a very simple formula and they owned that further divergence in the market because they're a new company, they're more flexible, they can understand the needs of their customer in that new market, and they grew a massive, one of the biggest in the world, companies from there. And then, say, social media comes around from the internet, and instead of Google being like, okay, cool, we're gonna now own social media because we own that original category or that original niche, someone like Facebook pop up, 
and Facebook are the ones who are more flexible. They're a new startup. And even though Google have so much more money than them, they failed in trying to own that social media space just because they were too big and too rigid. And Facebook had that advantage in that new emerging niche, in that new and emerging category. And uh, you can keep taking that further and further to instant messaging and wherever the technology is leading us. But to bring this back to Amazon FBA and bring this back to being relevant to us, we have to understand that when we're looking for a product to sell on Amazon, niches and categories are constantly emerging and they're constantly diverging to and becoming two or three or four separate products in each niche. And our job is to try and either create these new niches where there's demand or be one of the first movers into these new niches. So with that in mind, with that uh, perspective of we're looking for new niches that we can either create or new niches that we can either own. I'm going to jump into these four examples. Awesome. So we're going to go through this first example of a meat thermometer together. Now this is a level one innovation on the scale. And what I mean by level one is a level 10 is something like the iPad, something that is radically introducing a new technology that is very expensive uh, into the millions of dollars well outside my budget and I'm guessing well outside your budget uh, Maybe not but if it is, if it isn't go for the level 10 products However, we're gonna also start down at level one Which is some free ways to innovate if you only have a couple of thousand dollars to launch your product and test this market Then you want to use sort of level one level two innovations And we're gonna go up from there all the way to level six where you're gonna need a substantial budget But it's still going to be uh, within realistic expectations for private label sellers launching on Amazon. So the first example is going to be the cheapest one for us. And we're looking at something called a meat thermometer. And to be honest, this has been a confusing product for me. I've been watching this climb the bestseller charts for a while now. And uh, I'm going to use Helium 10. Uh, link is in the description for this. Uh, this is going to let us see how much money they're making and how much uh, total money the niche is making as a whole, what the search volume is. A uh, great tool and it comes in a suite of 10 uh, products. I will be using three of them together today, so I'll walk you through those. You can see the top left here. So Helium 10 allows us to see the total niche demand. And we can see the total revenue is about $4 million of these meat thermometers are sold every single month on Amazon. Now remember that is revenue, but you can see it's almost a $50 million if these, uh, if it sustains itself throughout the year, $50 million of meat thermometers are sold every single year on Amazon. So it's very, very high demand. And that's what confuses me. I don't know. These are obviously bought by uh, everyday people. I don't think it has a commercial use to it because you know, this very simple thermometer here is $365,000 a month. Um, and I do some cooking, I just don't use, I cook meat and I, I don't use meat thermometers and it works fine. Um, so I'm very surprised by this, but it's a great example to jump into because I'm gonna show you, this is obviously a very crowded and very competitive niche, how I would tweak the angle and when you think of innovations from one to three on this innovation slider, you're thinking about the angle you're approaching Amazon with with your product. So this is a meat thermometer. You can see they sell uh, they sell this as instant read meat thermometer number one. Um, and I'll jump back in that in a second. Before I do that, I just want to show you how well this has been selling. And again, this is Helium 10 tool uh, that gives you the historic sales rank. So sales rank is how well it sells compared to every single other. Um, item on Amazon in its category. And you can see this has been in the top 100 uh, sales rank down the bottom, that purple one, as I drag that mouse along, since January 2017, basically when it launched. And it's just stuck down there, very sticky listing. Um, and it's just done hundreds of thousands of dollars every single month. Uh, so we know the demand's there. We know it's been consistently there. But the point of this video is how do we beat that competition? Because there's obviously a lot of these um, thermostats or th uh, thermometers uh, selling out there and we need to differentiate in order to get a corner of that $50 million a year market um, and separate ourselves from this. So the way to do it is to find a new angle. So what does the consumer of this product use it for? You can see up here they've got meat thermometer, but they also have candy thermometer, meaning they know that people are also buying this thermometer to cook candy. And if I come down into this listing, you can see it's used for meat, 
bread, candy, coffee, and homebrew. Now, this listing, although they've got examples of bread down here, you can see they're targeting meat thermometer. These keywords are very important where you rank. You can see we typed in meat thermometer uh, in order to get these listings, but they're not targeting as, uh, as the head of their spear, as the number one thing that they wanna rank for, candy thermometer, or they're not targeting bread thermometer or coffee thermometer. And a very cool innovation is just to know what people are using a product for. You know, there's a $50 million demand market, but we need to switch the angle of the market because there's gonna be less people. They know that meat thermometer, I typed in angle, I can't talk and type at the same time. If I type candy, you can see candy thermometer with digital clip is the first to come up, candy thermometer with clip, candy thermometer. So we're gonna type in candy thermometer. And when we know uh, this is the free way to do it. I'll show you another way that we can also tell if there's demand here. When you start typing letters, whatever pops up is the most in-demand uh, search term for that. And you can see when we type in C, uh, candy thermometer does not pop up. So these are the most search phrases when you type in the word C. When we type in CA, you can see candy thermometer is actually number two. So it's a very, very sought after high demand product. Now you can see they look a little bit different. But here is our guy down here with ridiculous momentum who's ranking for this. Candy thermometer or bread thermometer or coffee thermometer is a new angle for the exact same product. And what you'd do is you'd put a little candy logo on there. You'd make, you'd make your brand name under the guise of it being a candy thermometer. Um, you'd put sugar thermo or sugar, thermo sugar or something that is resonating with the target audience, the subset of that really high demand niche. Uh, that's underserved. And what you do in your photos, you'd put photos just of candy and you'd put the first keyword up here, candy thermometer. And you're separating yourself from this ridiculous competition by going after a subset, a sub niche or a divergence of the market. And there's hundreds and hundreds of ways you can do this. The number one thing that I highly recommend is that you make sure whatever uh, divergence you're going after, if you're diverging yourself, make sure there's demand there. If there's not demand there already, you can't create demand where it doesn't already exist. Now, how do you do this? How do you create your own angles for something that's not a meat thermometer? It's very easy. One, you can look like we did in the description of what someone is advertising for as a secondary use of their product. You can come through and look at the reviews and you can see if people are talking about, I use this for X. Uh, and you can see there's demand there for it. A really good way to use uh, Helium 10, which once again, link is in the description for this, is you can use what uh, they call the Cerebro, which is the reverse ASIN lookup. And if that's confusing to you, the ASIN is just the unique uh, number on a Amazon listing. I'll show you how to get it. You come down to product information uh, and it should be, I just missed it, here we go. Um, this this random jumble of letters, you copy that and you paste it into this lookup. And basically this reverse engineers the keywords that people are searching for in order to find this thermometer. Uh, you can see this word frequency tool over here. But what I like to do first is always search, sort it by search volume. So you get the highest searched uh, key terms at the top. And then you can come down on the left and you can see what else people are actually searching for this thermometer under. And you can do this for a list of ASINs, uh, maybe a list of five, six, or seven of these meat thermometers at once. And you can get all of these phrases that people are looking for that are in demand because you're searching, uh, sorting by search volume uh, very quickly. And you can quickly come down and be like, cool, here's candy thermometer. It gets 28,371 searches every single month. Now this is Helium 10's estimations. They're going to be not perfect, but they're going to be rough um, uh, estimation that is pretty cool pretty good, pretty accurate as far as I've seen. And uh, you can see that, wow, this has a lot of search volume, people searching for it. it, comes up on Amazon as the number two search for CA. You know there's demand there. And when you go to candy thermometer, there's no one really pushing their thermometer as unique to candy. Um, you can try the same with bread thermometer, whatever, coffee thermometer, and you can just change the angle of your product. So if you're doing a search in whatever niche, whatever product you're looking at, come and reverse ASIN lookup. If you have Helium 10, 
and you can see what other keywords, what other angles can you switch it for. And it doesn't have to be, like I said, a change in product. It doesn't have to cost you thousands of dollars. It could just be a change in your photos, a change in your listing title, a change in your description that you are a candy thermometer specifically. You're ignoring the competitive uh, niche of meat thermometers, which is absolutely crazy mayhem. And you're like, we are the first dedicated candy thermometer. Awesome. So on to our second example. This is about a level two innovation on the innovation scale and it's basically understanding that you can add intangible value to your products you can add intangible personalizations to your products in order to create a new niche and one of the best examples i've seen of this recently is in the candle niche now you can see i just typed in the word candle here and you get a lot of quite interesting candles popping up. Obviously, we can do a quick helium 10 and we can see how big this niche is together and how much money people are making. Once this loads through, it's gonna expand this out a little bit. You can see these revenues popping up already, 600,000, 500,000, 300,000, $3.1 million of revenue every single month. Um, if this average is out, uh, if this is an average month, so about $36 million of demand every single year on Amazon for candles. Now, how do you tap into that niche? How do you separate yourself from competition and just being another generic candle that you have to really work uphill to get any traction on your product? Now, these people here called Homesick did incredibly well for a very cheap price, a very cheap innovation. And if you haven't seen these candles already, they're basically candles tailored to the specific state people are from. So I'm gonna click on this ad, unfortunately, and cost them a couple of dollars because I can't see their organic listing. Then, oh, is that it down there? Was that an ad? Oh, I thought I saw it. No. Nope. Must have been hallucinating. So we are gonna click on this ad, but we'll give them some exposure in this video. You can see this is a Florida scented candle. And when you click on this, you can see the drop down. You can see they do different scents for every single state. Now, personalization is a great uh, intangible asset to add into your product as long as you know the subset of that market is big enough. The demand, once again, I'm gonna keep saying it is key. Um, and you can see Coca-Cola. Uh, at least in Australia at the moment, they've come in with this personalization thing where they print generic names on cans and it makes people share it on social media that makes them buy the Coke can when they see their name on it. And they've just gone for the most common names and people are loving it just because there's an, a bit of intangible value added to it. You know, it doesn't cost them any more to print a name on it. It doesn't cost home uh, sick any more money to get the uh, scented candle of what they think the state might smell like. You know, they're not traveling state to state, sniffing the air and then creating a candle around that. They're probably just Googling what trees are in Alabama. And then they are, uh, what is it? We've got summer storm, blackberries, magnolias, and nutty pecan. Yeah, you know, they just Google what is in Alabama and then they make a candle out of that and they stick this uh, label on the front, which homesick is a great name for it because it gets people att attention. You know, if you're living abroad and you see the word homesick, you're gonna look, um, they've got the shape of their state and um, they've got these smells of their state. And you can see it happens for every single state and it doesn't take much. You know, you can start small. If you had to do every single state, of course, it's gonna cost you a little bit too much, but you could come out with say the New York candle. Um, and you could just be the New York candle. And now anyone who's searching Amazon and is from New York, which is gonna be quite a big uh, percentage of people, they're gonna want the New York candle for New York. Or you can start taking this down to a city level um, or a borough level, you know, within the Manhattan Island, you can have five different candles. And just being able to add, and the, the takeaway from this is not to launch your own candle, but it's to try and add an intangible aspect to your product that that is in demand that people would like um, that would increase the value and therefore get you a little corner of the um, Amazon demand. You know, there's $36 million and Homesick are gonna be taking in quite a bit of that. We can have a look at their bestseller rank. You can see historically here, it's doing incredibly well. You can see it's really stuck to the bottom there uh, in the low thousands and then it drops down here very recently. It uh, looks like that's pre-Christmas, yeah. A uh, great Christmas present to give people who are obviously away somewhere um, is a homesick candle. And it's a very cool innovation, a very simple one, and a very cheap one. All right, so now we're moving on to sort of a level four innovation on our innovation spectrum. 
and that is from the bedside lamp niche. Now we can do a quick Helium 10 and we can see what sort of demand is here in this niche. And then I'm gonna show you someone's idea and brilliant idea to corner a large portion of this market. Um, you can see this lamp is doing extremely well at $219,000. Just a very simple touch lamp. Uh, yeah, color changing, so it does change colors. But you know, it is a very simple lamp. And once again, we're gonna sort this by revenue. If you ever see me doing any sorting, I always sort demand first. Demand is key. Then figure out how you can protect a corner of that high demand market. So almost a million dollars a month of revenue in the bedside lamp niche. And you can see when you scroll down, there's gonna be a few innovations. You can see this person's innovated with their style. This person's innovated with their style here, really cool. Um, this person's innovated with their color and you can see the innovations and the divergent from the original these are some old-school looking lamps um, Here's a smart lamp where you can charge your things from you can see the lamp keeps diverging and diverging and diverging until it's broken into a hundred different lamps with different category leaders in each of them now one that really caught my attention was the moon lamp and this goes back a couple of years I uh, was when I first saw it it's a big Shopify product I don't recommend selling this or any of these products I'm showing you but I recommend looking at how they took the audience the audience are people who are going to sleep and want a bedside light now what do they want they just want something that's there something that's um, that's warming that's nice and when you look at it from what is the audience after? That's when you can start to find these diversions or jump onto these diversions by asking what are the needs that are being fulfilled by the audience? And you can see the moon lamp has already been, it's just obviously the shape of the moon uh, that lights up on the inside. You can see it's been diverged already. This was the one with a hand sort of stand on it. It's on here is a galaxy in a sphere. Um, and then the, the niche diverged once again to a floating moon lamp. Uh, so you can see this one doesn't even have a stand here and they're a little bit more expensive, but it was a great product to go into a little while ago just because it's such a brand new niche that people are, uh, keep creating. And if you can be one of the first movers, you do it with a high quality product or you create your own uh, niche like these Moonland people did and then get a patent on it, get a trademark on it like these people failed to do, you could own that thing in its entirety. And I know this may be a little bit too advanced for most people who are starting on Amazon, but I wanna show those people who have a little bit of a higher budget what you're looking to do, how you want to create your own niche, diverge a niche that's already there from bed light to moon bed light to floating moon bed light to floating galaxy bed light to constellation lamp and how these things keep diverging and there's a lot of demand and a lot of money in it along the way. So these moon lamps, you can see 40,000 searches um, every single month and you can see these revenues are pretty impressive. So you can see this one's 125,000. Uh, forty-three thousand, seventy-four thousand dollars of revenue every month um, from a very simple innovation. Now, our level six innovation. Let's start with the water bottle. Now, the water bottle was very simple. We've had a couple of massive, massive brands. Um, Hydro Flask, uh, not these ones. These are the, sort of the ones that copied Hydro Flask and rode that trend. Came in with a very superior uh, premium bottle, which is often is a great innovation just to go super premium uh, to chill your water and they just took over the market and they're a ridiculously big company at the moment but you can see they've got lots of innovations lots of divergions from this niche you can see this is a motivation uh, drinking motivation bottle where it gives you the time of the day and where you should be at with a little bit of like don't give up you can do it sort of motivation as you go and you drink this stuff i uh, drink this stuff as you drink your water throughout the day um you can see there's lots of different uh, you can see this unique selling proposition is it just has a, a cleaner that comes with it. Um, don't recommend something like that, but uh, you know you can see people are diverging from the original water bottle to flasks to motivation ones to collapsible ones uh, down here, and all these are at different levels of the innovation spectrum. And all of them, uh, if we helium ten this, you could see are doing extremely well. I'll let you helium ten or jungle scout or whatever you have this one for yourself. I don't want this video to go for too long. What I have found recently is someone invented the smart water bottle. Now, the takeaway from this is once again, don't launch a smart water bottle, but they took the target market of people who want to drink water and they want their own bottle to do it. It's very simple when you break it down like that and almost a little bit silly. And 
they understood that what people wanted to do is they wanted to drink more water. And like the one that tells you with the little tabs on it, the motivational one, that people often forget to drink water is one of the biggest problems within that target market, within that audience. And their innovation came from having to, uh, being able to remind people to drink water using their bottle. So you can see, this is the Hydrate Spark 3 Smart Water Bottle tracks water intake and glows to remind you to stay hydrated. So the tracking water intake is great if you wanna measure how much water you have a day, which a lot of people do. But the best innovation I feel like and the way the why this one took off is because it literally glows. Your bottle glows when you haven't had enough water, when it's time to drink water. If you set it every 30 minutes or 20 minutes and your bottle's there on your desk and it glows, you're gonna pick it up and you're gonna drink water. And it's just a brilliant innovation. Now, obviously this is a level six one because it takes uh, some software engineering for their app. It takes the the building, the actual technology in the bottle if it hasn't um, been invented yet. And then from this bottle, I actually don't know if this one was first or not, but either way, other people are jumping on. You can see it's a $60 bottle. Um, that's the, the go-to one, the one that's making the most money at the moment. Uh, but you can see this one here is a nice looking bottle with blue light that comes out the bottom for 25 bucks. They're a, a new mover in this brand new niche and brand new category uh, that are also doing really well. Uh, and we can see just how well, number 246 in bottles, number 4,000 bestseller rank, uh, not, not quite as good as 300 bestseller rank. Once again, this is Helium 10 that is giving us that option there. The link is in the description if you're interested in that. Um, but you can see all these smart water bottles are now starting to pop up. Um, here, Hydrate Spark 2. So this is the Hydrate Spark 3. That was the 2. You can see that's doing really well. And you can come in and another way to innovate is see what they're not doing well. Why aren't people liking this bottle? And try and make that into your own bottle if you're coming into this market. But once again, it's going to take, take quite a bit of money to get into this market unless you launch a cheaper one like this, which could be a good idea. But what I'm trying to get across to you is you need to see Amazon. You need to see your product research, not as high demand, low competition product, let's launch it because you're going to meet a lot of competition in there. Everyone else is also going to be finding that niche because they're using the same tools as you. You need to be, where is the demand out there? And then how can I corner that market? What, what value can I bring to the market to make sure that people like my stuff and therefore will give me value back in the, in the, in the case of, in, on Amazon, on, sorry, no, I've forgotten how to speak. I got excited. This. Uh, in the case of Amazon, they'll give you value back in the form of money. That's why I got excited because we're talking about money. And this is what you need to do. You need to look at the innovations you can make using maybe a Helium 10 tool. Maybe there's an intangible value, another intangible value really quickly before we go. Cards Against Humanity, one of the biggest items on Amazon. It's just a pack of cards which costs about a dollar. And you can see they've done really, really extremely well. Where is it? Yeah, 38,000 reviews. They've done tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars of sales from a pack of cards. They sell it for 23 bucks. Uh, you know, it's going to cost them a dollar. But because they've got that intangible value there in the sense that it's a game in the pack of cards or a custom t-shirt. It's a t-shirt, but if you like what it says on it, you can't get that anywhere else. It's intangible value you're adding. This one is the one I wanted to show you. Kids Against Maturity is number 171, number 28,000 in toys and games. Um, it was actually way above that. It's dropped a little bit, but you can see Kids Against Maturity is its own brand. It's not under the Cards Against Humanity brand, but they saw Cards Against Humanity doing very well. They're like, cool, we're going to have the same style game, but for kids. And therefore, the card market diverged. This is one for adults. Now this one's for kids. And they created this own niche. They created this own category, which I'm going to keep my eye on because they're doing extremely well. So you can use Helium 10 to find a new angle, such as in the meat thermometer, the candy thermometer. You can use uh, some intangible value like we talked about right now. You can take the audience, such as the lamp, and be like, cool, what needs do these people need fulfilling? And fulfill that in a superior way, like a moon lamp. That's a much more peaceful, nice nightlight than it is a bright light sitting on your bedside table. Or you can uh, do that on a more extreme technology, technological level, such as the smart water bottle. So pretty please give me a like if you've got value from this video. And good luck out there if you are launching your product or you launched it already. Try and use these strategies to get on top of that competition in the market because if you do that, all that demand that's coming into your niche is going to come your way.